I love sine distance functions. You can use them to blend between geometry in a smooth way. You can make all kinds of shapes just using math. And they even work in higher dimensions, not just 3D, but even 4D and so on. So in this video, I'll show you how to do all these things in Houdini. So first, what is a sine distance function? Well, normally geometry is made up of triangles. And that's great if you're building the pyramids. But if you're building something round, like a sphere, then you've screwed yourself over because you need infinite triangles to perfectly represent the sphere. Now with the distance function, you don't use any triangles at all. You just measure the distance from some point in space to the closest point on the surface of the shape. And it's called a sine distance function because it's positive on the outside and negative on the inside. So the sine tells you if you're inside the shape. Now at the moment I'm drawing it as if you know the direction to the shape, but you don't know, you only know the distance. It could be in any direction, it could be up, it could be down, it could be left and right, it could be anywhere inside a sphere. And so it's normally drawn using a sphere instead. You can think of it not only as the distance to the surface, but also as the biggest radius for a sphere that you can put nearby without intersecting anything. So let's talk more about Houdini. There's two places in Houdini you can find sine and distance functions. One of those is Copernicus with the SGF shape node. The other is volumes like level sets and isosurfaces. Sadly, these are both crusty grid-based representations, so you don't get the smoothness that you do mathematically and from other render engines. So let's start with an example. Here I've got a pig, and I want to convert him into a SDF grid. And to do that, I can just type in VDB from polygons and just turn him into this grid-based SDF where it's measuring the distance for each point of a grid. And you can see that if I use a node called VDB visualize tree. If I plug that in, and set it to show these, you can see these points and each of these points is measuring a distance to the surface of this pig. And I can show you exactly what that means just by adding a little sphere. I'm going to tick points with values and that's going to store this attribute called VDB float and that attribute is going to be the distance value stored on each of these points. And then I'm going to use a rename node you don't need to follow along. I'm going to rename VDB float to P scale. And now I'm going to visualize that. I'm going to change my visualizer to disks. And now you get these giant spheres. I'm going to just delete all the ones that I don't want to see. And you can see, like I said, it's only touching the edge of the surface. And you can keep checking through all of the other ones as well. And you shouldn't ever see one that's intersecting the surface. So that's basically what is getting stored in this grid. So now I'm going to make another one. So I'm going to make some more geometry and I'm going to copy paste this node and connect it. So now I've got two grids that I want to work with. This is the first one. This is the second one. First, I want to start by combining the values together. Now, the normal way you do this is by doing what's called an SDF union, which will take these two and just merge them like that. But I'm going to do it manually. And the manual version is using a volume wrangle. I'm going to plug in this one, plug in that one. And in the wrangle, I'm going to first get the first distance that I want to use, which will be float dist is going to be the surface. This is basically just taking the distance of this pig. So you can see that this is named surface, which means that this will be the distance of the pig. Now to get the distance of this shape, I'm going to sample the volume by using a thing called volume sample. So for the geometry, I'm going to set that to the first input, which will be this input of the wrangle. Then the surface I want to sample is going to be, I can either use the name of it or the primitive number. So I can either type in surface or I can type in zero. And then I want to sample it at the current position. And that's going to give me the second distance now, to do the combination, it's very simple. You just need to type the surface is the minimum of the current distance and the second distance. And now you can see the top half of this guy is getting merged in to the bottom half of this guy. Now, you might be wondering why is the whole thing missing at the top? And that's we don't have enough data. So if you look at the tree 
and I'll change my visualizer. You can see that this has a limited size by the exterior band voxels and the interior band voxels. So if I increase that, you can see that I'm getting more data in the top corners and that changes the result that I get here as well. So I'm going to firstly tick fill interior because I want values to always be on the inside. And then I'm going to extend this outwards quite a bit. And the same I should also do for the second volume. So this guy needs some more voxels as well. So I'll fill interior and I'll extend this one out as well. So now that gives me enough data to do a blend of the two manually. And that should give me the same result that you get from STF Union. That's pretty much the same result. So now let's get a bit more quality so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to make this a bit smaller, maybe even 0.03, and I'll do the same for the other one as well. So now you can see that I'm going to need a few more voxels just to add in now that I've increased the quality a little bit. So minimum is the equivalent of union for sine distance functions, but there's a lot of other operations, many of which can be found on Inigo Killers' website. So I'm just going to copy paste all of these other ones that you can use. I'm going to add them to the top of my code here. And it's going to give me an error because Houdini uses Vex, and Vex is a completely different language to this one. This one's actually an OpenGL language called GLSL, but the difference is very, very small. The only thing I need to change is this comma to a semicolon, and I do the same for all of the other functions. Any arguments need to be spaced out using a semicolon instead. And now that I've done that, all of these are fixed, so now I can use them. For example, let's take the OP union does the same thing. OP subtraction, shove that in there, it subtracts the pig. Intersection, shove that in there, it takes the joining part of both of the geometries. OP XOR, that'll give me uh, areas that are not overlapping each other, so the opposite. And this XOR one doesn't even exist in Houdini at the moment, so this is a fresh one. And another one that's hard to find is smooth min. So smooth min is a thing that blends together distances in a smooth way. Now there's many variations you can use. One of the most common is the quadratic one, which I'm going to copy paste. And I'm going to dump it over here. So now again, I need to replace the commas with semicolons. And now I can use it. Smooth min takes distance one, distance two, and a parameter that controls the smoothing or the blending. So I'm going to copy paste that there. And then I'm going to add a slider K for the blending. So if I type float k is a new channel float, that's going to give me a slider that I can use to control k. So now if I press plus, you get this k parameter, and that's going to control the blending between the two sine distance functions. Now one thing that's really important to note is if you don't have enough voxels, for example if this thing has three voxels, you're going to get this weird behavior where the pig expands much too large, and that's an artifact of not having enough overlapping voxels. Now I want to mention there's some alternatives to using the exterior band voxels. One of those is using the VDB activate node. So if you plug that in, and I'll just visualize it like this, you can use the expand mode and then increase that. That'll give you more voxels as well. Another way is using the VDB extrapolate node. If you plug that in, um, the dilation gives you more voxels as well. Now when you're done with this, you can convert it back into geometry using VDB convert. So if you use that node and set it to polygons, that'll give you a polygon representation. All right, so the next example is going to be making sine distance functions from scratch. So at the moment, I'm using VDB from polygons, which is turning the triangles into a sine distance function. But what if you want to use a mathematical sine distance function instead? Well, you can do that. So first I'm going to add in a VDB node. And what this node does is create a blank volume with nothing in it at all. I'm going to give that volume a name, I'll call it surface, and I'll set the class to level set, which is what a SDF is. So then I need to activate an area of this volume, and I can do that using VDB activate. So if I set the size to be slightly bigger, and I set the visualize to smooth wire shaded, you can see this rectangle. And this rectangle is the size of the area that is currently active. So there's nothing in it at the moment, so you don't see anything, but this is gonna give me some area that I can add my function into. So now I'm gonna add in a volume wrangle, like before, I'm gonna plug it in, and here I'm gonna do my own sine distance function. So a very common one is a circle, and you can do this just by doing f at surface, is the distance from 
zero, 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 meaning the center, to the current position. Now you don't see anything at the moment because the sphere currently has a radius of zero. But if I subtract one from this, you're gonna suddenly see a sphere. Now it's getting cut off because my bounds aren't quite big enough. There we go. So now you can see I've completely made the sphere just from scratch. And this thing, the radius, I might actually add a slider for. Slider for the radius. There we go. Now I can make it bigger or smaller. Now distance to zero is actually the same as doing the length of the position. So if you do that, you're going to get the same result. And that's how it's normally written. Now you can find a lot of other functions on my website. I've actually got not only the sphere, but boxes, round boxes, toruses, cones, and all the other shapes. For example, let's take the box. Let's copy paste that in. And now you see a box, round box, copy paste, boom, round box to get a chain actually. Chains are pretty cool. And all of these are actually written by Inigo Killers, who's one of the great authors of sine distance functions. He's very famous for them. Now this function's looking quite crusty, and the reason again is because it's a grid, so it's not perfectly smooth, but you can add more detail by decreasing the voxel size. And then I can turn this back into geometry using a VDB convert node, and that'll give me polygons. Now there's many interesting operations you can do on sine distance functions. One of those is domain repetition. Now domain repetition is interesting because it's copying the coordinate system and that causes the shape to get copied as well. Now at the moment the coordinate system I'm using is the position. So I'm going to type in P equals V at P here just to make it more clear. So P is my coordinate system and I can tile that coordinate system. So if I do P modulo one. That's going to suddenly repeat that circle. So what is this really doing? Well, if I'm doing modulus mod x1, it's going to repeat that coordinate system. Every time it reaches one, it goes all the way back to zero again. And I can change the number of units by increasing this to two or to three. And doing that in Houdini, let's change this to two. It's going to be more spaced out. Three, even more spaced out. So I'm going to repeat it every two units. If I want to keep it centered, I can subtract one. So I'll do P minus equals one. And now it's a bit more centered than it was before. And you can see if I expand out the grid, you get more and more and more and more spheres repeating infinitely. Now I forgot to change the radius to be my slider. So I'll just do that quickly. And now I can make it smaller or bigger as well. So now I've got an infinite grid of spheres. Now another operation you might want to use is expanding or contracting the shape. It's called rounding on the website. The way that works is very, very easy. So let's take this guy, for example. What you can do, drop down a volume wrangle, plug him in, and you can do F at surface minus equals one. And that's going to make him one sphere bigger. If I set that to a slider, I'll call it radius. That's going to allow me to expand him out or even contract him inwards as well. Now there's also a Houdini node that does this called VDB reshape SDF. Plug that in, it'll do exactly the same thing, but much slower for some reason. Now one of the even more batshit things you can do is four dimensional shapes. One of the great things about sine distance functions, they don't have to be 3D, they can be 4D or 5D. You just need to generalize the distance function so it works in that dimension. So I'm gonna take these two nodes from the sphere example, copy paste them over here. And now I'll show you how to make 4D shapes. <laughs> so plug this in, and I'm going to again do a sphere. So F at surface equals length V at P minus the radius. That'll give me a sphere with like a radius of one. So at the moment, the coordinate system I'm using is 3D because position is a vector. And a vector in Houdini has three numbers in it, it has X, Y, and Z. But you can very easily generalize this to four dimensions. Watch this. So if you do vector P, V at P, that's going to be a 3D position. To do 4D, watch this, vector 4. Now this is not going to work at the moment because position is still 3D, but I can add another coordinate to make it 4D. So I'm going to do a set. It's going to have the position X, then the position Y, then the position Z, and then a slider for another coordinate that I'm going to call the W. Now it would be nice to use a Houdini coordinate for this, but Houdini is 3D geometry, so I'm just going to use a slider. And changing the W seems to make the sphere shrink and expand, but it's actually not shrinking and expanding, it's slicing it. If you sliced a 3D sphere, you'd get a 2D circle that appears to shrink and expand. 
The same thing happens if you slice a 4D sphere, except now the result is a 3D sphere instead. So the W slider is actually controlling the position of this plane that is slicing the sphere. So this sphere example isn't very interesting. A more interesting one would be the cube. So I've got this code on my website that basically makes a cube instead of a sphere. And I'll rename the W so it's lowercase, so I can use it with my slider. So now this cube looks like it's appearing and disappearing. And you can visualize this in 3D by taking a box and slicing a grid up and down that box. So to get some more interesting shapes, we can rotate the cube as it's being sliced. That requires some 4D rotation functions from my website. So in 4D, there's six planes of rotation and each of those has its own function. For example, rotate XY rotates around the XY plane. So it returns a four by four matrix that you can multiply with the coordinate that you're using. And the angle that you give it is gonna be the radians that you wanna rotate that coordinate by. So I'm just gonna copy all these functions and paste them above what I had before. And now these functions can be applied to the coordinate system that I'm using. So I have P, and if I wanted to rotate P, you can do P times by one of these functions. For example, rotate X, Y, and use it here. And then the argument is gonna be the rotation in radians, so 0.5 radians. Now that's gonna be rotating it by that amount. A more interesting example is this one on my website. I'm going to copy paste that one, which combines a few of these rotations together and gives you this result where you see the cube getting sliced in a very peculiar way that doesn't really make any sense. Is this useful to anyone? Probably not. But is it very interesting to me? Yes. And I will continue to make videos about this later. So thanks for watching. And you can download all the files mentioned in the description.